Okay, hi guys, and welcome to the show. Today, I'm not only reviewing one watch, but two watches from the British watchmaker, Bremont. Now, if you recall, I did take a look at these, uh, well, one of the pieces here back in, I think it was last year, might have even been the year before when we visited their boutique. Now, of course, before I get into it, I'll do a quick wristwatch check. Not sure if you can see that. Let the camera focus. I'm wearing my World War II. Well, in honor of uh, this British brand today, I thought I'd wear something that was worn by an RAF pilot in World War II. This is my 1945 Omega pilot's watch with those extremely lovable blued hands that poire our hand. Yeah, it's, it's funny enough, it's coming up to a year that I've owned this particular piece. Um, so I will be discussing it in a video I think next month. When is the anniversary? I think it's August is the anniversary. So uh, expect an update video on this particular piece. But yeah. So wristwatch check done. Let's discuss a little bit of history about Bremont. Now, I had the uh, the honor and the pleasure of, of uh, attending a recent event they held here in New York City. It was fantastic. I got to see many of the watches, uh, not only talk to the founders, the brothers, Nick and Giles English, who are really wonderful down-to-earth chaps, hearing their passion and their, their inspirations and uh, the motivations behind the, you know, all the particular watches and, and what really goes into it was absolutely fascinating. They hired this amazing townhouse in the city. They also had a watchmaker there uh, taking apart the watches and, and so we could really get a, a good look. But probably the most interesting aspect of, of this visit was, well, first of all, we, we got to meet a few members of the good gentry attended. Uh, shout out to everybody there. It was a bit of a last minute thing, so uh, it was a shame we couldn't invite more people, but stay tuned for more events. But one of the things that really impressed me was their specialization with uh, bespoke watchmaking of special editions for serving and former members of the armed forces. Their watches are not only constructed to withstand the rigors of high altitude and undersea depths, but their military watches adorn the wrists of, of combat personnel worldwide, and they work very closely with elite military units from all over the globe, providing this, this extremely impressive bespoke service, which I've never seen anything like it. And the, the sheer amount of dials and, and customization was, was incredibly impressive. So a little bit of background on the brand themselves. Uh, they were founded in 2002. Uh, they're based in Henley on Thames in England. Their annual production is approximately about 8,000 to 10,000 pieces. They are known primarily for their aviation pieces. Uh, Nick and Giles are huge aviation enthusiasts. However, they have been producing dive watches as well uh, since about 2009, starting with the Supermarine S500. The namesake of this particular line derives from the 1930s aircraft company. And the names of the particular models we're looking at today are a direct reference to the prototypes that led to the development of the most famous British fighter of World War II, and without a shadow of a doubt, one of the greatest fighter planes of the war, the Spitfire. We'll talk a little bit more about that in just a moment. So let's start out with getting the dimensions of the watch. The S300, which was released in 2017, we have a diameter of 40 millimeters, a height of 13, lug to lug is 42, eight millimeters and a lug width of 20. The 2018 release of the S500-01, we have a diameter of 43 millimeters, a height of 16 millimeters or 16.5, lug to lug is 50 millimeters and a lug width of 22 millimeters. So a very substantial difference between them. Let's start by looking at the case because I think this is probably one of the most interesting features that uh, Bremont offer. The case is what's called their triptych case. Basically comprises of three components. We have this DLC scratch resistant barrel. The surface of the case itself has been treated and has a hardness of 2000 Vickers. With its stainless steel case back, the S301, we have an engraving, an etched plan view of the S6B, which is a precursor to the um, Supermarine Type 300, which of course then subsequently became the Spitfire. And I, I love this touch. It kind of ties it in with the, uh, the, you know, the aeronautical. On the top of the case, we have this 
incredible arching lugs um, that are quite modernist for a watch that is, well, deeply vintage inspired. We'll discuss that in just a moment. Look at the curvature. It's, it's quite incredible with these massive beveled edges. It's um, certainly very distinctive. I've never seen a case like this. We have a brushed finish on the side, high polished on the beveling, and then brushed again on the top. A ceramic insert, which is uh, laser engraved for the enumerals. Uh, the bezel itself is 120 click. It's a very solid action to it. And then we have a domed sapphire scratch resistant crystal, which just continues the line of the bezel beautifully. It does have anti-reflective coating. It looks almost like some kind of modernist architecture uh, something Richard Rogers <laughs> would design. Uh, it, it's so modern. And then, then we have, if we look at the dial, very classic vintage style cues. The hands in particular, I, I mean, they're a throwback to early aviation pieces. They're tapered syringe hands with sectioned uh, luminova. The markers are uh, kind of faux patina to emulate the aging of, of you know, the, the old tritium. And instead of Swiss made, finally we get to see London there at the bottom, which f uh, fills me with such pride, you have no idea. The red script is, is uh, a little nod to the early uh, Submariners, inspiration taken from 50s and 60s divers, obviously the, the, the lack of crown guards here in particular, and this more conservative uh, 40 millimeter size. I love the red lollipop hand and golden colored print on the chapter ring or the rehort there. Bremont again written with their little propeller logo underneath. Very neatly done. And we have the date at three o'clock in negative, which is just perfect. The markers are also framed in a very subtle little bit of silver. Quite elegant. The matte texture of the ceramic bezel is also not an absolute black. It gives it a slightly kind of sun-blessed or faded look, which again assists its mid-century aesthetic. So this, as the dial says, is a 300 meter water resistant diver. You can see that lovely matte texture on the dial itself. Very tastefully done, very classic, uh, and yet comes together beautifully. This, this stark contrast of ultra modernism and then you know classicism with the with the uh, little nods to the golden era of of um, dive watches if we compare it to its larger brother the s500 here you can see that this time they've gone for applied markers knurled finish towards the center this is of course 500 meters water resistant. We have all the same color scheme and you can even see a differentiation between the, the printing on that etched bezel there, alternating from crisp white to that patinaed kind of cream yellow. The handset is exactly the same, just made larger obviously. And this time we have actual minutes indicated on the rehort. What are any of the other discernible differences. Well, if you see on that inner ring, we just have a slight minute increments there. If we look at the side, the more typical crown, now I say typical because this is typical for Bremont, their divers, their first divers always had the, the crown at the two o'clock. This is unusual in general, but I, I think it's really cool. And it has this a singular crown guard just on one side, because obviously this top right lug here does the job of the, the of protecting it on the top side. We have this kind of copper sleeve or almost gold tone. It's more of a copper on the crowns. The crown on the S500 is etched, whereas here we have a lovely little inlaid. I'm not sure of the material. It's probably ceramic. It's in a kind of high gloss finish. Very nice touch. However, the most dramatic change is probably on the back. The S501, uh, features a display back, the BE36AE, which is basically an ETA caliber 2836. 25 joules, 38 hour power reserve, operates at 28,800 vibrations an hour, hackable manual wind, and of course, quick set on the date. This is the top grade version, it's COSC certified. These movements are, of course, fully decorated with blued screws and pelage work, as you would expect. 
and it's been beautifully modified. It's slightly, ever so slightly uh, skeletonized rotor there with what I think are pistons from the engine of the um, airplane. The S300, on the other hand, has uh, the caliber BE92AE, which is essentially an ETA caliber 2892. This is a 21 joule movement, 42 hour power reserve, operates at 28,800 vibrations an hour. Also, obviously, automatic, COSC certified, and we have quick set hacking manual wind all the rest of it. Now, both movements contain a glucidure balance, an anacron balance spring, as well as a Niverflex mainspring. This larger case also features a patented anti-shock movement mount. Now, both the watches I was lent here today come on these fantastic leather straps with just a very traditional buckle there, essentially exactly the same, only different sizes with um, lovely brushed finish and again kind of matching beveling that uh, echoes the case design so a lovely kind of dark very subtle chocolate brown very substantial well made and I think complements its vintage uh, style cues wonderfully I should point out that there are versions of both watches there are versions with numerals on the dial which I, I, I gotta say are absolutely stunning which is probably what I would choose personally both of these watches are also available on bracelets or rubber straps it's bigger brother here is uh, available in various different iterations there, there is a version with the day date complication my particular favorite is the S300 with the blue and the numerals at the 12, 9, and 6. The choice of colors is just outstanding. I, I got to see these at the event. Uh, the blue in particular is just stunning with this kind of sunburst effect and a, and a slightly more glossy finish on the ceramic bezel insert instead of the matte we see here today. The loom markings, despite being on the smaller side, are very responsive. You get a clear idea of orientation thanks to the variation in the shapes of the markers. The S500 has a fully loomed bezel, while the S300, just the pip at the 12 o'clock is loomed. And the very last difference is the actual edge of the bezel. Uh, the 300 has more of a kind of, I guess, almost like a coin edge, whereas this has, I would say, cut out kind of notches. Uh, but to be honest, it doesn't really impede uh, grip whatsoever. This is also 120 click um, and equally as, as, as solid. So they are uh, obviously unidirectional. So let's pop these bad boys on the wrist and uh, see how they were. We'll start with the S301. Several moments later. So for my extremely skinny six and a quarter inch wrist, it wears wonderfully well. Those lugs are just incredible. They, they really angle the strap in the right direction to give a very secure, reassuring feeling once on the wrist. This proportion, it's perfect for me. Um, <laughs> probably not a good thing, but yeah, absolutely perfect. My only criticism, now I am wearing it on this side uh, because the viewfinder, it's a little bit difficult to explain, but it's just easier for me to film. Um, if you are going to be wearing it on the right, the crown does jut out quite a bit. Um, my only slight criticism, but it's also remarkably slender as well. Very legible, uh, very comfortable, and you feel the solid, I mean, it's a solid, solid, well-made piece. Cannot deny that. And this is the really surprising thing. Despite this being an absolutely massive beast on my tiny little wrist, it's incredibly comfortable. The S500, despite its rather statuesque uh, scale, is about 120 grams, whereas the S300 is 96 grams. This triptych case, especially the lugs, do well again, even with a much larger scale. And I gotta say, it's very comfortable. It reminds me a little bit of a Panerai, actually. And I didn't even have to punch an extra hole in the strap. Uh, which is what I often <laughs> I often find myself doing. If you are, uh, if you suffer from uh, micro wrist syndrome like me, um, yeah, you you end up doing that a, a lot. But actually, it just I can't believe how comfortable this is. It has a very macho, much more substantial, obviously, than its uh, little brother there. 
Um, but yeah, rather rather shocking surprise that it's so comfortable. Anyway, let's uh, summarize the watch, talk about positives and negatives. So we'll start with the positives first. And I think one of the main strengths of Bremont is undoubtedly their quality. They are impeccably well made. Nick and Giles's passion and, and love really comes through on the final finished pieces. I also, and this probably only applies to, to, to me or, or fellow Brits, but it does mean something. If you are a true horologist, you will appreciate that England especially for centuries led the world in watchmaking because it is a crying shame that, that we've lost this great horological history. We only have to mention um, Thomas Tompion or Charles Frodsham, my particular favourite, as you guys know. Uh, Harrison, who changed the world, revolutionised maritime history and, and, and horology. George Graham, John Arnold, the list is endless. Unfortunately, these days, we only tend to see super high-end watchmakers like Roger Smith flying the flag. But finally, there is a brand that offers something that is not just, you know, super high-end and, and unattainable. Beaumont, yes, it's a luxury brand and their watches are on the expensive side, but it's far more accessible than, let's say, uh, you know, a tourbillon made by the late great um, George Daniels that you have to go to a Christie's auction or whatever, you know. These are honest tool watches that are worn by professionals and have been tested to the very limits of endurance. And um, they're also very unpretentious. There's nothing trying to be anything other than their own thing. And I really respect that immensely. And the result of these incredibly durable uh, pieces with cost certification there's no doubting the performance and precision of these pieces something i i deeply admire the celebrities that you see at their events they wear them on their own volition they're not paid to which i just think is absolutely fantastic and speaks volumes about the sincerity the 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 earnest watch enthusiast not a hired ambassador that uh, quite frankly doesn't truly care about what's on their wrist but at the same time they also sponsor sporting events exploration expeditions which i just think adds to a, a kind of authenticity and well uh, the best way i can describe it is class that is that is pure class i also have to say aesthetically that it's quite refreshing the vintage inspired watch trend has dominated the industry in the last couple of years nobody can deny that but I like how Bremont uh, approach it. They don't simply get a, a Rolex Oyster style case and you know change the colors a bit and boom, there you go. No, they, they've got something that is very unique, utterly their own thing, but yet still pays tribute to the classics and at the same time managing to be modern, not only in its construction and materials, but also in these incredibly elegant cases. There's a lot of detail that, and thought that has gone into the design. And I think the real winner definitely has to be the, uh, the S300 for me. I think finally Bremont are embracing uh, a return to more conservative sizes. And, and it's a shame that I didn't cover it earlier, but this, is an absolute crowd pleaser. One of my favorites has to be that delicate, pleasing little arrow mark at 12. Reminds me actually of British Army military markings on uh, the World War II watches, as does the strap, funnily enough. Now I know many people out there absolutely detest divers on, on leather straps, but I think in this case, it just, it just works. I would have never expected such refined hands. It's amalgamation of classic design traits and contemporary, not only materials, but the modernity. It's almost quite graceful in its design, blended together seamlessly. I also much prefer the simplicity of the S300 over the 500. So what are the negatives? Well, let's address the big elephant in the room and talk about value. And I've seen this a lot. The, the criticism on these watches is that they are rather expensive for what is essentially an ETA-based machine. I understand that most people haven't visited watch factories. They don't know what goes into producing watches. They simply don't understand the, 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 the cost of, the, you know, not only the infrastructure, but in the investment. So it's forgivable that if, if you don't know that much about watches, you're going to think they are perhaps a little bit on the expensive side. And yeah, they are expensive. That is a lot of money, especially when you consider what else is out there 
on the market. However, you've got to remember that this is, you know, this is made in Great Britain, which is no affordable doing. The fit and finish is of the highest standard. And you've got, you know, chronometer grade, top grade um, modified movement. If you love it and you want to proudly have a British made dive watch um, that is unlike anything out there, it's worth the price. It, I, at the end of the day, the price is down to what the consumer is willing to pay for anything really in this life. My only negative is, is that crown. It juts out a little bit. While it is very easy to grip the screwed out crown, the threading is, is absolutely beautiful as you would imagine. I am slightly frightened of it catching. Uh, whereas, this is so strange that I'm saying this because this watch is absolutely huge. This crown guard, it being at the two o'clock, especially so close to the lug, it really works. It, it, it's also, it's very kind of ergonomic and, and um, practical. I would almost like to see this crown on this watch, marriage of the two. My only last criticism is I, I wish this particular version came in a smaller size. And some of the larger wristed drenchery out there will probably uh, say the same of the 300 and wish that this came in the larger size. But in conclusion, for me, the real winner here is the S301. I think it's an outstanding watch. I think it's a refreshing diver in, in a market that, um, and forgive the pun, is slightly oversaturated with very similar designs. Bremont is a brand that you can certainly be proud of. I'm very excited to see what Bremont do next. So guys, I'm gonna leave it there. Please don't forget to add your thoughts, queries, comments, opinions, all the rest of it down below, especially if you are a Bremont watch owner. I'd love to hear your feedback. Massive thank you to the wonderful people at Bremont for lending these in. And also, of course, a shout out to Nick and Giles. Uh, I look forward to seeing you all again soon. Please don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed it, found it useful. And as always, guys, thank you for watching and I will catch you in the next one. Okay, ciao.